Hey there, welcome back to another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Porterfield, and today, before we dive into one of my favorite types of episodes, which is an episode about one of my students who has had amazing success, and I want you to hear her story because I think it will inspire you and really encourage you to keep moving forward. But before we get there, I want to do a quick podcast listener spotlight. This one is from Cara Harvey, and she's in my online marketing made easy Facebook group. And Cara says, Oh my goodness, that episode on SEO with Neil Patel was amazing. I'm just diving into SEO this past month. And this was so great. I listened a few times. Well, Cara, you're a girl after my own heart because I listen to podcast episodes that I love a few times as well. I want them to really sink in. So I listen and then again and again and again till I really get it. So I'm so glad you enjoyed that episode. If you are looking for some SEO tips, make sure to check out episode 221. It's on my blog. You'll get all the details there. Okay, so this episode is all about my student, Kim Constable, and she's going to talk about how she created a course and used webinars, and really, she's going to dive into what things look like before she started building her business the way it looks now. She's going to talk about the messy beginnings and the mistakes she's made along the way, the challenges, and also the big wins, and it's so fun to hear somebody else's story because it really brings to life how you can create an online Online business, even though it doesn't go the way you thought it might go from the beginning. Now, I want to let you know that Kim took one of my courses, Webinars That Convert. However, I'm retiring Webinars That Convert and Courses That Convert at the end of 2018. I'm actually taking the programs off the market. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm coming out with a brand new program called the Digital Course Academy in January of 2019, and I could not be more excited. It's been a while since I've had a brand new program, and although there might be some similarities between my webinars course and my courses course that I'm now retiring, this program is going to be new and exciting, and I'm introducing strategies I've never talked about before. I'm I'm introducing a brand new flow to how to create a course and how to launch it with live webinars again and again and again, and then how to move those live webinars into an evergreen funnel so that you can make money over and over and over again, but not having to live launch all the time. So there's a really nice flow to this brand new program, and I cannot wait to introduce you to all the new strategies and insights and the new trainings. And I'm doing something new where all my lessons will be direct to camera, meaning you're going to see me a lot inside this program. It's not only going to be my slides and my voice, which I've done for almost 10 years now. So I'm upping my game, providing a really exciting, fun, new experience for you. And this program is going to get you huge results. If you are looking to move beyond service-based business or one-on-one -on -one business, or if you're struggling with your business model and you would love a course-based business model like I have in my own business, then you definitely want to pay attention to when I launched the Digital Course Academy. Again, I'm launching it in January of 2019, but if you want to be the first to know, go to amyporterfield.com forward slash DCA amyporterfield.com forward slash D like digital C like course, a like Academy DCA. And you can sign up to be the first to know when I go live with the brand new program. I also have a course creation freebie waiting for you there. So you'll want to grab that when you go on over. All right. I can't wait to introduce you to the brand new program. It could definitely change your life and your business. I feel confident about that one. Okay. So as I promised, I want to tell you all about Kim Constable. Now, Kim is a mother of four. She's a yoga instructor, and she learned how to turn her passion for having a muscular booty and chiseled abs into a multi-million dollar business in just the last 18 months. Specifically, she teaches vegans how to get fit 
and toned. And her secret weapon to market her business, webinars. So do I have your attention? You're going to love the story. Kim is a total firecracker. And I wanted to have her on the show because she is an example of somebody who found the path that she wanted to follow and she just went for it. Head down, no comparison, no flip-flopping of strategies. She just went for it. One path, one strategy, and she made it happen. And also, one thing I love about Kim is that she is not afraid to take risks. So she tried something new. She put her whole heart into it. And let me tell you, it is definitely working for her. Now, in addition to using live webinars, and that's how she started all of this great success, she now turned those live webinars into an automated system, and she's ended up making $330,000 in just nine months with automated webinars. What I love is she followed my strategy that first you go live with your webinars and then you turn them into evergreen automated webinars. I mean, she's such a good student, but more so than that, she just has a passion for what she's doing. And I want you to hear all about it. So I won't make you wait any longer. Let's bring on Kim. Kim, thank you so much for being on the show. I am honored to have you here today. And I am absolutely delighted. You have no idea. Oh my gosh. This is going to be such a great conversation. I cannot wait to uh, share your story with all of my listeners. But before we really get into the nuts and bolts, I am curious, how does a vegan homeschooling bodybuilding mom of four get into the online world? Do you know, it's a, it's actually an interesting story and it definitely wasn't a straight line. Do you know that you see those, you know, those diagrams of what, what we think success looks like in a straight line and what success actually looks like. And it's not a straight line. Well, mine was definitely the wiggliest line you've ever seen. What happened was back in 2009, I actually started a service-based business. So I started a multilingual program for children and it was a service-based business. And I was really excited about it and really passionate because I had three kids of my own and the business grew really well. But then I found out that I was pregnant with my fourth child, which kind of threw a spanner in the works because he was a little surprised. So what I, I just remember, it was funny, I was running this business and I was, you know, just having given birth, trying to do the schedules on the wall and trying to figure out where everybody was supposed to go and all the staff. And I was so stressed trying to manage everything. And And I I remember sinking to my knees one day in the hall and just crying. I was trying to get the kids out the door and everybody was crying and didn't want to do this, didn't want to do that. And I just sank to my knees and I cried. And they were like, mommy, are you okay? And I thought to myself, there has to be a better way. There has to be an easier way to make money. So I I thought to myself, maybe I could write an ebook, right? So I thought, maybe I'll write an ebook. I'll start researching writing ebooks. And as I began to research writing an ebook, because I'd heard at the time in 2009 that these were, you know, popular, uh, becoming popular. So I began to research it. And as I began to research an ebook, what actually happened was it opened a whole new world to me, which was the world of blogging, the world of internet marketing. I had no idea what a blog even was at the time. So that was kind of the very start of my foray into the online world, which then made me move into, you know, I thought, well, I run a successful business or I run a successful business. Maybe I can, you know, move into teaching moms, other moms how to run successful businesses. And I started a business called the Work at Home Moms Network. And Amy, honestly, I sometimes go back just to cringe and watch the videos. They're still on YouTube. (laughs) I haven't taken them down. But my first ever videos that I did for the Work at Home Moms Network, they were absolutely terrible. So I I started the Work at Home Moms Network. I tried and tried and tried to make it successful. I did have moderate success with it. But the problem is like my, my heart wasn't in it. If you know what I mean, it was it was what I did. It was what I knew, but it wasn't what I loved, if that makes sense. You know, I knew how to start and run a business and make it successful, but I didn't. It wasn't really, truly what I was passionate about. It's just kind of what I knew. And I think that was probably the reason why it wasn't, you know, the success that I really wanted it to be at the time. But I gave it all up in the end. I was one day I was like, why am I doing this? Why am I putting all this pressure on myself to homeschool my kids and run this business? Whatever. I'm going to give it all up and become a yoga teacher. Because I was, I had always practiced yoga and I'd always loved, you know, practicing. And people always said to me, you should be a yoga teacher. And so I gave it all up. I closed down all of my, you know, my Aweber account and I closed down my, you know, internet, my, my website. I closed down everything and I became a yoga teacher. That's okay. Problem. Wait, that's a okay. huge um, shift. Okay. First of all, that means you gave up a pretty big email list. 
You know, I did. I actually, it was, it was funny because I was chatting to a friend of mine just afterwards. I said to her, you know, I had a 30,000 person email list. She was like, you had 30,000 people on your email list. I was like, yeah, I really did. And I was like, and you know, I can't find it. And she said, what do you mean you can't find it? I said, I downloaded it, you know, as a CSV file from Aweber when I closed my account. I said, it was in a computer and I, I changed computers and I don't know where it is. Okay, I'm dying right now. And I know people are listening like, wait a second. I've been struggling to get a thousand. You have 30,000. And not only do you give it up, now you can't find it. So they're probably getting angry with you right now. But before <laughs> before we well, go on. You know, I am a big believer in, you know, I was like, you know what? Obviously wasn't meant to be. And my friend who's very successful at what she does, she said to me, you know what, Kim? They were probably, they wouldn't have been in your target market anyway for exactly. yoga. Exactly. You know, yeah. So it makes perfect thing. sense that you moved on like that. However, I do have a quick question for you before we go on, because we have so much to cover, but you built a really big email list and it feels like a short period of time. Can you just give us one or two ways in terms of how you built that email list? Yeah. It's funny because I was actually interviewed by a couple of people. You know, I, I remember the guys from Learn to Blog. Do you remember Learn yes, to Blog? Yes. Yes. So, Matt and Bradley. So I, they actually used me as one of their success stories and their ads for a long time because I did use a lot of their strategies actually to build my list. But one of my most successful strategies was I'm a real people person. And I, I'm, I'm really, I'm a big one for getting the most out of a situation. So I, what I did was I targeted, I was quite smart about it actually. So I thought I really wanted to build my email list. And I thought my my subscribers at the time would have been mums, okay? Mums wanting to start and run businesses from home, hence the Work at Home Moms Network. So I found at the time, Facebook was just getting really big. So I found really big names online that had a really big Facebook following, or it wasn't not so much Twitter, it was Facebook at the time. So they had big Facebook accounts whenever Facebook was still giving loads of engagement to people with big Facebook accounts. Yeah. Uh, I, um, I targeted them and I asked them if I could interview them. Now, these people, I, and I just wanted to interview them for my members, you know, for, you know, obviously to find out why they were successful. So I, one particular one, a girl called Karen Allpert, she had a really, really, really funny Facebook page on a blog called Baby Sideburns. And I reached out to Karen and I said, you know, can I interview you? And she was like, yes, I'd be delighted. And I always stipulated that as part of the interview, you know, I asked them, would they be willing to share it with their audience once the interview went live? You know, once it was up on YouTube and on my blog. And they always said yes. Because they, you know, they weren't trying to make it in the online world. They were like protecting their own email list. They were just happy to get more exposure. And I obviously was building a big list. So I had something to offer. So that was one of my biggest strategies. I think when Karen shared the interview that we did, I think I picked up about 8,000 subscribers from that one. That is crazy. Did you have a freebie? If you had an interview and she shared it, what were they opting into to get on your list? Yes. I, I, you know, I can't remember exactly what the opt-in was, but I had one on my website and I think it was, it was either a business plan or it was a checklist. Okay. Or so when something. they came to your website, they found it though. Yes. Awesome. Yes, okay. Cool. I know that was a little off track, but I know that my audience is very much focused on list building. So I just kind of wanted to share. I love that idea. I love the strategy. Yeah, it, was of- really fun. it was really at the time, you know, it was just tapping into a resource of, you know, someone who, you know, because whenever you go after the big names who have their own companies and their own lists, you know, unless you have something to give back, you know, something that's going to be beneficial for them, then, you know, they're, they're not likely to, to come on and agree to, you know, uh, network with you or do some kind of joint venture or partnership. But people who at the time, and it's not so prevalent now because Facebook has changed their algorithm as such, but people who had big, big Facebook followings back in the day were very valuable because they, you know, once they put it on their Facebook page and go watch my interview, it drove a massive amount of traffic to your website. Right. So you got to kind of translate the idea into what works now, but still, I really love the concept. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I took us off track just a little bit, but you had this business. You thought, you know what? I'm changing it up. I'm becoming a yoga teacher. But then you didn't start bodybuilding until 37, right? So tell me how you decided to get into training for competitions. Do you know, it's a funny story. I was actually telling someone, telling it to someone the other day, and I thought it's a funny, the little poignant moments that you remember. And every, my grandmother is still alive. She's 95. And my sisters and I go down every week. We take it in turns to go down and bring her food. And my dad looks after her and, and we do that. And I remember I'm always very thoughtful after I come back from visiting her because, you know, she's old and it's back to my childhood home and, and all of that. So I love going down there whenever it's my turn on a Saturday. And I was driving home and it was fall. And so it was getting dark quite early. And I remember driving. I remember exactly where I was when I was driving. And I thought, 
I really, really, really would love to, I just want to be able to, I just want to make more money. I want to be more successful. I want to give my family more freedom. I want to be able to travel with my kids. And, you know, it was homeschooling, so much of homeschooling is traveling and exposing them to the world. I thought I want to have more of that for myself. You know, how can I, you know, start a business? And I thought I want, I want to start a business. I want to be more than a yoga teacher, but how can I do something that I truly, truly love? And I thought, you know, what is it you love? They always tell you, tap into your passion, find your passion and you'll never work a day in your life. You know, that's what everyone always tells you. And so I, I remember thinking, but all I love is muscles because I'd always love muscles. I, you know, from, I saw Sarah Connor in Terminator 2, you know, with her AK-47 <laughs> and her sunglasses when I was like 11. I just, I, I just always loved muscles. And I remember thinking, I just love muscles. I thought, well, how can I make a business out of muscles? I'm not a PT. I'm not a trainer. I do nothing with muscles. It would just take too long. I, that's what I told myself. It would take too long to even try and think about starting a business like that. So I kind of dismissed it out of, you know, out of hand. So then I, I continued on my yoga journey. I started a yoga program online in the detox yoga sphere. It's 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 actually, it's not for sale at the minute, but we are going to relaunch next year called D-Yoga Talks. And then one day I was walking past the mirror. I had a, a little studio at home where I used to teach from and I was walking past the mirror and I was wearing, I had three big mirrors on the wall and I was wearing a, a thong at the time, a G-string, right? Because I was coming in to get something. So I was getting dressed in the morning and I, I came in wearing a thong and I think like a t-shirt and I went over and I got something out of the drawer. And as I walked back out again, the sun was streaming in through the window. And as you do when you're 37, wearing a thong and there's big doors <laughs> in front of you, and the light is shining on your butt, I thought, good time to examine my butt because bikini season is coming up. So I want to see what it's going to look like in a bikini. So I turned around and I looked at my butt in the mirror and I had that, you know, that epiphany moment where I looked at it. I was like, oh, you know, and I, I saw like I saw my granny's butt in front of me. <laughs> you know? That's the only way I can describe it. The skin had started to soften with age. It had started to sag a little bit. And I had this epiphany moment, Amy, this epiphany moment. I looked in the mirror and I it was like everything that I had ever worked towards or thought I knew to be true about being lean and having a great body was completely flipped on its head because I had always eaten quite low calories. I'd always been, you know, quite lean. I had a bit of a mum tum, but I was, you know, always quite lean from teaching yoga. And I looked in the mirror and I thought, I can't eat any less. I thought I'm a professional dieter. I have dieted for most of my life. I have always been on low calories. I can't go any lower in calories. I can't do any more exercise because I'm doing 14 hours yoga a week. And I looked at my butt in the mirror and I thought, I, my go-to, my go-to to to change my body when I was unhappy with it, as it is for most women, was always to lose body fat, lose weight, go on a lose weight, go on a diet, not happy with your body, lose weight, not happy with your body, go on a diet, the juice diet, the master cleanse, the eat vegetables only diet. You know, we, we, we know all the diets. And I looked in the mirror and I thought, I can't go on another diet because my butt will just get smaller and the skin will get saggier. And there's a, my husband always says, there comes a point in a woman's life when she must choose between her butt and her face. And it's so <laughs> true because you no, know, if you have a bigger butt, you usually have a bigger face and you don't have as many wrinkles. And so I looked at my butt and I thought, I can't, I thought the only way I'm actually going to change that is to fill it up with muscle. That's the only way I'm going to stop it from getting saggier and older and looking like a really old woman's is to fill it up with muscle. Uh, I had this epiphany moment. So I went downstairs and I logged onto the computer and I looked up world's best fitness model and I bought a program. It was actually by the Australian fitness model, Emily Sky. And interestingly, she and I are now really good friends. Oh, I love that. Of course, because I'm like one of her biggest success stories now as well. So we, you know, we love to connect. So I bought her program. I started training in the gym. I trained for three months. And then one day on Facebook, I saw a picture of a girl who was training for a bikini competition and she tagged her trainer who lived five minutes from my house. And I thought, that's my next step. I'm going to get a trainer and I'm going to do a bikini competition. So I texted him immediately. It was 10 o'clock on a Saturday night. I said, I'm really sorry for the late text, but you know, I'm a big one for just acting on impulse. And so I said, he said, no problem at all. He said, well, love to meet with you next week. And he said to me in the bottom of the message, he said, I said, this is what I want. I think I want to do a competition. I really want to train. And he texted back, no worries. Let's get shredded. And I was like, oh, you speak my language. You speak my language. So, um, so that was it. That, I, and then whenever I started with him, I arrived with a pen and paper in my hand. And I was like, you don't mind if I just write everything down? And he was like, you're going to write everything down? And I said, yeah, I just want to like document my journey, if that's OK, because like I'm a big one for data and I want to see what works and what doesn't. And he was like, OK. So I arrived every day with my phone, my camera, my notepad. Okay, OK, well, that made and a big difference for you because... The fact that you documented the process from day one, you turn that into something. So talk about that. Yeah, well, you see, I kind of had that intention because I'm always thinking ahead. And I thought, 
well, you know, because I'd already started into, you know, back into online marketing. I was like, oh, do I really want to go down this route again into online marketing? But I'd already done it with the yoga. And I thought, you know, and then I, I so do you know what happened, Amy? I'll tell you what happened. I actually, I'm going to reverse that a bit. I didn't arrive in the first day with a notepad and pa- pad and paper. I said to him, I'm, I'm a vegan because I'm a vegan, right? And I don't eat any animal products. So I arrived in and I said, I'm a vegan. I said, do you, have you ever trained a vegan? He said, no, I haven't. And I said, okay, so that's fine because I'm really good with nutrition because I'm, you know, I've been working in detox yoga for many years. I'm a, I'm a health nut. I've been studying nutrition for 20 years, which I had because I was so into the human body. And I said to him, that's fine. No worries. I just need you to train me and I'll take care of the nutrition. So I went home. And I typed into the computer, vegan bodybuilding, vegan fitness model, vegan trainer. And a couple of ones popped up, a couple of different websites popped up. And I looked at their business models and I thought, what are they offering? And I was like, she's offering coaching for like $500 and you get to check in every day. You get a weekly Skype meeting. And I was like, this girl ain't making any money. This is not a scalable business model. So I was, and I thought, oh, and as I delved deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, I realized there was nobody, there were no vegan bodybuilders, male or female who had a scalable business model that I could see. And it kind of went ding, 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 ding in my head. The kind of alarm bells went off. I went, if I'm searching for this information, how many other people are searching for this information? And in that moment, I went, I'm going to create a course. I'm going to document my journey. And I'm going to create a program for other people like me who want to buy this information and who are obviously searching for it online. Because if I'm searching for it, I know they will be. And that is how the whole process started. Uh. I love this. This is exactly what I tell my students. Create a course based on your own personal success. And of course, if you get success for other people, that's always a bonus as well. But typically people start with the success that they've gotten for themselves. And I love that you set the intention from day one. Like you realized, wait a second, there's something here. So you created a program and you sold that. How many copies do you think you sold? Oh, do you know, it's funny because I I created it and I decided I would just do it like on AWeber. So I I wasn't even going to, you know, because I I was like, this is too big to create a whole online course. And I didn't have a designer developer. So I signed up for AWeber again with my zero list. And I I just created an autoresponder series that would send out the workouts once a week. So as I did the workout, I wrote it into a PDF. I I didn't even have clickable links or anything then at that point. So I made it into a PDF. I wrote the recipes. I sent it out to, you know, I, I set it in as an autoresponder and I started to tell people on Facebook, you know, friends, Facebook, because I was known as a very good yoga teacher at the time. And I had, you know, I was running workshops and things. So I had a bit of a following in that respect. People respected what I had to teach. And so I think I sold 30 to 40 copies. I mean, it, you know, and I was charging $18 a month uh, and you could cancel any time. Um, or I was charging $97 up front for the entire year. Because here's another thing that I did, right? I remember once Marie Forleo, I love Marie. And I know you and Marie are friends. I'm a yes. big fan of you. And I remember her uh, watching one of her episodes. I mean, there is so much, just as a little side note, there is so much good free content out there. Like right. so much good. Marie's, honestly, her content is amazing. And she taught in one of her episodes, she talked about a book called Blue Ocean Strategy. And I remember thinking, well, if Marie's using this book and she's successful, this must be a good book to read. So I bought it. And it teaches you in that book how to look at what everyone else is doing and then do the opposite in so many different areas, you know, price point, customer touch point, all different things to do with the the program, you know, and to do the opposite. So I thought, well, hang on, there's nobody offering a 12 month program. And also, I know that it's going to take me longer than eight weeks or 12 weeks. And here's what here's the thing, Amy, the program that I bought was a three month program. And I worked my ass off for three months and my body didn't change that much. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, I don't want to sell someone a lie. I don't want to say to them, you're going to have a completely new body after three months because I knew they wouldn't. And then they're going to come back to me and go, I thought, you, you know, I thought you said I was going to have a three month. Yeah, I, was, I was going to have a completely new body. And I don't. I thought I want to give people something that is sustainable, something that is true and something that they can actually get results from. So that is what I did when I created my program. I thought I'm going to create a 12 month program so they could buy the night. They could pay $97 and get the 12 months up front. And actually, we have people in my program now who joined in the very beginning who are still members now and they got it for $97 and they have the entire program. You know, I offered them lifetime membership. And so, wow. You know, I still- okay. That's really cool. I love that. And when you kick this off, when you kick this new program off, you didn't use webinars. So talk to me about how you got started with webinars. 
Oh, here, it's a really interesting story, right? So with webinars, I remember, you know, years ago, whenever I was exploring online marketing, I'm a total information junkie, okay? I am like, if I decide I'm going to do something, I will consume every single type of content that there is. I signed up for every webinar, for <laughs> I downloaded books, I read books, I bought programs, I, I did, you know, I researched as much as my budget would allow me and I used a lot of free stuff too. But I remember once, um, whenever Melanie Duncan first came on the scene, uh, I remember she ran, uh, whenever Pinterest became big, she was running a series of webinars on Pinterest. And I watched, uh, I listened to her webinar and I was standing in the kitchen doing my ironing, right? Watching the slideshow and listening to the webinar. And I remember then she sold her program at the end of the webinar. It was the first ever webinar I'd ever watched. And I thought, and I remember at the end of the program, I was like, I so want to buy her course. Like my, my finger was hovering over the buy button, but I knew at the time, like, I was like, what am I going to do with the Pinterest course? It wasn't, you know, some, it wasn't an area I was focusing on. I knew my husband would say, you spent what on a Pinterest course? <laughs> but, you know, but I was so sold by her, you know, by the information she was giving away. I was blown away by what she was teaching. I wanted to buy the course. So anyway, I then one day I'm on Facebook and your webinars that convert popped up in my newsfeed. And Amy, I have followed you for years, like years and years back whenever you were doing Facebook marketing. And I used to go and like totally creep on your page and like, oh, she's got that kind of banner. And oh, she's got that. And oh, look, she's got that copy. And that looks really good. And I, you know, had been totally, you know, following you for years, but I'd never bought any of your stuff. But I knew that you were making it big and I knew you were making it happen. And I thought and I knew you were running webinars and I thought, Amy's running webinars. She's doing really, really well from webinars. She's now teaching other people how to run webinars. I want to do webinars. <laughs> so it's kind of a match made in heaven. But I waited to the very final sales email, waited to the very final one where it was like the program is closing. And then I was like, oh, well, I won't do Well, I won't do well, I won't do it. And I was like, OK, Kim, you just you know what? This is a big it was a big investment for me. And I thought I am going to make this work. I am going to purchase this and I am going to make this money back a hundredfold, you know, in a, in a very short space of time. And I made that commitment to myself as I pressed the purchase button uh, and that I get into webinars. So good. Now, here's something I know about you, and that is that I know you didn't buy a bunch of other webinar courses to learn how to do it. So what's your philosophy around the fact that you bought webinars that convert, you're all about learning it, but you're not going to buy a bunch of other courses to teach you how to do it as well? Do you know, Amy, it, it, it actually drives me insane. As a, and, and I think that as a bodybuilder, okay, what you learn as whenever you train in yoga or whenever you train in bodybuilding, one, one of the, the things that working with the body teaches you is that you can't borrow bits and pieces from different people's programs because then you just end up creating a mutant program and they and then you can't guarantee the results. So your your promise was, you know, create and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was, you know, create your first five figure webinar, I think in three months or less. Yeah. Is that it? What? Yeah. yeah. So I remember thinking, well, Amy wouldn't make that promise if she didn't actually, if she didn't think she could deliver on it. She's not one to make empty promises. So if I buy her program and I follow the steps and do exactly as she tells me, I will be able to make five figures in three months. And, and I think that was the biggest thing. It was, it was trust, you know, it was because I know if someone comes to me and they say to me, can you sculpt me the body of a physique athlete? I will say, yes, I can, but you need to do every single thing that I tell you and do not deviate. And I know that if they do it, they will get the body that they want. But it's when they start falling off the wagon and lying to you and cheating and borrowing bits from other people that they don't get the results. When someone doesn't get the results, it's because they're not following the plan. So I'm a good soldier. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I just follow the plans. No, I did not buy anyone else's course. I bought yours and I literally did exactly as you told me. And I scheduled time. I was so serious about it, Amy. And I think I said to you, I said this to you earlier, but it was funny. Whenever I watched your webinar, I remember you you telling the story of the guy who made 30,000, I think, in his yeah. first webinar. And I remember I, I, I loved your webinar and I was so into it. And I was taking notes and I thought, I am going to make more than him in my first webinar. <laughs> I said, and I actually said to myself, not only am I going to make more than him, I'm going to be Amy's most successful student to date. I just okay. I said to myself when I was watching it and it was and I don't know why it was important to me, <laughs> to do it, but it was. And I also said, and one day Amy's going to invite me on her podcast. Stop it. <laughs> I swear to God, I swear. Okay, I just that is so cool. I said that to myself. 
Okay. I love this. I mean, I know some people look back and they're like, oh, I don't need a silly goal like that. But it just drives you in the back of your mind when you're sitting there watching videos after videos after videos and you're thinking, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to do it. And now look, you have huge success. And I love that we called you up and we said, come on the podcast. We want to talk about it. Wow. I, I, couldn't believe it. I said to my friend, I was talking uh, actually to Tarzan afterwards and I said to her, Amy invited me on her podcast. It was one of my goals and I haven't even told anyone it was one of my goals. Like I was so excited. You uh, have no idea. I wish you could see me. I have a huge permanent smile on my face. That is the coolest thing ever. And but it really did drive me on, you know, and I and I scheduled the time. Like I I treat Amy, you know, I I treated it seriously. I you know, I have bought so many programs in the past and I and I bought them and I've kind of done them till they were nearly finished. And I, I'm a big, I'm a terrible one for getting three quarters of the way through something and then getting impatient and either launching it or moving sideways or finishing it or digressing into something else. And I said to myself, no, 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 because it was, a, it was an investment. And I appreciate that was an investment, which is why I made my program an investment, because when someone is financially invested, they are more likely to show up and do the work. Oh. And I, I scheduled time every week, every Friday, I arranged for my niece to come and look after the children. And I scheduled two hours of my time to work through the material. And if you said at the end of a module, do not move on to the next module, download your worksheet, complete the worksheet, write out your 10 ideas for your titles, your 10 ideas for this or whatever, do this work. I stopped it and I did the work and I, I did not let myself move on to the next module until I had finished the work. And then I did the next module. And so I, it took me longer. It took me six months from start to finish because I, I, it took me a long time to create my course. And I was absolutely determined to do it really. I, Amy, I was going to be your most successful student yet. So I had to, I had okay. to give up my. <laughs> I think you have reached that mark. I think you are our most successful student unless somebody comes out of the woodwork and says, nope, it's me. <laughs> so let's put the challenge out there. But you hold the yeah. title, girl. And that is so fantastic. So it took you six months. Let's talk about this. I want to break it down. If you're listening to this podcast now, really hear me. She could have done it in three months and she could have been super stressed. The woman has four kids running a business, tons of stuff going on. And she allowed herself to take six months to create the course and launch the webinar. And if she said after three months, this is taking too long, I'm not going to do it. We would not be talking about her huge success that she has today. So you get to make your timeline as long as you're committed to it you will get to the finish line. So I love the lesson you just gave us here that you put your own timeline to it and you committed to it. And that yeah. is huge. Yeah. I mean, I said to myself, I will not launch it until I am proud of it. And if that takes me till next year, I knew I was on a deadline because you can't launch anything in November, December, nothing fitness related because everybody's thinking about purchasing, you know, presents in the holiday season. They're not thinking about joining businesses. So I knew I had kind of a window between September, October, November, where it had to be launched or else I would have to wait until the next year. So it was good to have a deadline, but I also promised myself I would not. And there were days when I was impatient. There were days when I was like, I'm done with creating this slideshow. I'm fed up with this. I can't. Oh, I, I was frustrated because my I was waiting on my designer to finish stuff. And and I, you know, I'm a very resourceful person, but I had to I had to wait. I had to be patient. And I just promised myself I wouldn't launch it until I was proud of it and until it was done oh. and not not perfect. By the way, I want to really want to make that distinction because here's the thing. See, when I launched it, I only had phase one created and there's six phases. And so I actually created the phases throughout the year. I, I didn't even have time to create them all, create all the workouts. And also I wanted to see how the students responded. I wanted them to go through and say, well, what do they need in phase two? I, I, could, I saw it in my mind how I wanted it to be, but I didn't know where they would need to go. So I, I, I paced them, engaged them the whole way through. And then I created phase two and I released it. And then I created phase three and I released it. I and love I made it. Them Sequentially, so it wasn't perfect by any means. It wasn't even finished, but it was finished enough to launch it and to launch it well. Okay, so what happened when you decided to do your first webinar for your sculpted vegan program? Well, <laughs> I laugh now because now that I know, now that I know, I well, you see, whenever I signed up for your webinar, because I, I really like, I said this to you, you know, another time <laughs> earlier that I, I really am like your cyber stalker. I was just like, okay, anything Amy does, I'm going to do because if she's doing it and this is the way she's doing it, she's doing this way for a reason. So I'm going to do it that way too. So whenever I signed up for your webinar, I realized there were eight different options of times I could choose. I think it was two times on a Tuesday, two times on a Thursday. And then you taught us this in the course, obviously the best times to schedule your webinars. 
So um, there was two two dates, that four dates one week and four dates the next week. So I don't, and I still don't know to this day if your webinar was live or not, or whether it was an evergreen. I assumed it was live because it was done so well. So, but now looking back and thinking, you know what, that was probably an evergreen if there were eight different options. <laughs> probably didn't do eight live webinars. But I decided that since you were doing eight live webinars, that I was going to do eight live webinars. So I scheduled not one webinar, but I scheduled eight. I scheduled two on a Tuesday, two on a Thursday, then the following week, two on a Tuesday and two on a Thursday. So that's how I did my. So I didn't do one webinar. I did eight webinars. (laughs) Okay. We got to stop here. This is so fantastic. So I will say during a live launch, I might do as many as six live webinars. I'm sure what you saw, you're right, was probably evergreen. However, when I first came out with my webinars program, I would tell my students, I want you to do two live webinars. Now that I've revamped the program and we've got Digital Course Academy coming out, I'm telling them that I want them to do at least four live webinars. And so the fact that you went out with eight was actually brilliant because as you know, that first one tends to be awful. Would you agree with that? It was absolutely horrendous. I rushed all the way through the sales pitch because I was so nervous about doing it. And it was absolutely terrible. Terrible. (laughs) But what did you think when you realized, oh my gosh, that was terrible. I hardly made any sales. This is not going to work. What did you think then? I had not, I didn't have any time to think because I had another one in in three hours. Exactly. I, I just had to keep going. And, uh, and the second one wasn't actually much better either, to be honest. It was, it wasn't really until the, it wasn't really until the last, you know, the last one or two that I was a total and utter pro. And I learned so much, you know, I learned so much all the way through it. I learned that I didn't even know I could keep my camera on. I, I thought that they could only see my slideshow. And then one day I realized that, you know, I think it was in the second week of webinars, I realized I could turn my camera on. And I was like, oh, ooh, <laughs> should, I, should I keep my camera on? I was like, oh, I don't know. And then I just made the decision. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to turn the camera on because I'm going to turn the camera on so they can see me and see the slideshow. And oh my, people loved that. They were like, this is so amazing that I can see you. And and the people loved being able to see me and see the slideshow because you can tell I talk a lot. So I tend to, I have to really try and, you know, move through the slides. I do move through them pretty quickly, but I like to elaborate on my points and people loved being able to see me. So I learned, I learned so much from doing them. And by the end of it, my sales pitch was so polished and I- so bet. I'm the same way. Like I need a few every time I do a new launch, like when I launch brand new in January, I'm going to need a few webinars till I feel like I've hit my stride and really nailed the, the sales portion. And I am turning on my camera. So that's another thing. When I first launched the webinars program, I didn't do a lot of direct to camera. So I didn't teach that, but things have changed. And I think you need to turn the camera on, maybe not the whole time, but at least in the beginning in the Q and A, if you're, you're new at that. But what I loved is you experimented. You didn't just stick with one thing as you got more comfortable. You started to try new things, which is such the perfect way to ease into webinars. Now, you also made some money. So break it down for us. Yeah, well, honestly, I just thought, you know, and it's funny, I remember sitting doing my slideshow. I went to Starbucks to do my slideshow and um, or to make my slide deck. And and I, I would, Amy, do you know what I did to make my slide deck? I mean, right. honestly, this is, this is like the extent of my stalker tendencies. I printed yours out because you, you give it to us in the webinars. So I printed yours out and I went, so I was like, okay, Amy's first page. And I looked at your copy and I looked at how you, and I thought, okay, so how can I convert this into my message? So I took your message and I made it into my message. Not, I mean, completely different text words. If you looked at our webinars, slide decks, you would never think they were right. similar in any way because it's completely different content and branding and everything. But I literally was like, if she's done it and this is the way she's doing it and she's given me this as a, you know, as an inspiration, well, I'm going to use it. So I literally went through it slide by slide by slide by slide. And so in in the end, I actually created my slide deck, I think in three hours, the entire slide deck, there's 124 slides. That's I did it. impressive. You might get the award for the fastest. Yeah, I just I just did it because I I didn't reinvent the wheel. You taught me how to do it, so I did it the way you taught. You know, I did, it was I just I, I'm I don't have a lot of time in my life. I have to I have to move fast. So I that's how I did my slide deck. But what I did was I thought and my my point was I remember sitting and agonizing over the price. I was like nine nine seven. I want to charge nine nine seven because I think it's worth nine nine seven. But is anyone actually going to pay nine nine seven for a fitness program? And I, my husband was like, oh, I think it's too expensive. I think you need to charge maybe 47 a month. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And then I was like, no, I'm just going to grow a big set of kahunas and I'm just going <laughs> to charge 997 and I'm going to, because I know that it's worth it and I know it's going to change lives. 
and I, I know that I'm going to create an amazing webinar and I'm going to and I'm going to sell it at the end. and I'm going to stick with that price point. So I did. I, I stuck to my guns. I stuck to the price point And I thought to myself, OK, I know I need to invest some money in Facebook ads in order to like I, I knew I needed to sell. You know, I knew that I if I wanted I'm a big one about numbers, Amy. I'm a numbers girl. You need to get the numbers in order to you know, in order to convert, you know, I knew that if I could get 150, 250, if I, could, I think it was 250 registrants is all I could afford in the webinar package at the time. If I, but I knew if I could get 250 registrants in each webinar, that would be 2000 registrants. And then I was able to, you know, reverse engineer the numbers and think if I got 2000 registrants and X amount of people showed up and X amount of people purchased and X amount of people, I just reverse engineered it back. And I thought, okay, I can make, you know, I can afford to invest about $13,000 in ads. Because, uh, you know, with these, at least then with these numbers, I know that so much of sales is a numbers game. So I thought if I invest this, I can get these numbers and I can sell this and, my, and I, I can afford that. And I also looked at, well, how much can I afford to lose? Say it all goes tits up. Like, can I afford to lose $13,000? And I spoke to my husband and he was like, yes, it would, wouldn't be a good thing, but, you know, it wouldn't bankrupt us. We can, you know, he saw how much work I put into it. So I invested $13,000 in ads. I followed your module religiously on how to set up and run the Facebook ads. I had also previously done a Facebook, a, um, a very quite a cheap Facebook ads course. It was only like two nine seven, so I had a little bit of experience in Facebook ads. And I launched the ads. I invested thir- about thirteen thousand dollars, and I had about one thousand five hundred registrants over the eight webinars. And I think I had about four to five hundred show up live across the eight webinars. And then I ended up making $52,000. Wow, that is so fantastic. So across your eight webinars, as you gave yourself some space to kind of ease into it, $52,000. And this is your first time out with webinars for this specific program and for this business you had created. Yeah, and just as an FYI, I didn't I didn't sell after the webinars. I think I had about in total five sales directly after the webinars. I remember finishing my first webinar and like running into my computer and like looking and kept hitting refresh and refresh and refresh. Is anyone purchasing? Is anyone purchasing? No one's purchased. And you know the way you go through that like despair of, oh my God, like no one has purchased. And I said to them all, my customer services team is waiting to take your orders. And no one was, and I was like, okay, okay, just don't panic. Just don't panic. Don't panic. It's fine. Just do your next webinar. Keep going. So where most people purchased, which is why your system is so beautiful, was in the post webinar uh, follow-up series, in the email follow-up series. Uh, Interesting. See, and everyone's kind of different. So many sales on the last day, 21 sales or something on the last day. Okay. So cool. So for those of you who have never gone through a webinar training with me, I teach how to sell on the webinar, but then there's a whole post email sequence to everybody who registered for the webinar afterwards. And there's a cart close email and all this good stuff. On my biggest days were on the days that you said they would be on the days when I offered the bonuses. Like I did everything to the exactly what you said. Such a good student. I absolutely love this. Now, <laughs> Kim, I'm curious from you, like, why do you think you were so successful because wait, one thing you didn't actually say is that you did your live webinars, but then you put it into automation. And I think you've made what? $330,000 in nine months on automated webinars. I have indeed. We, we had last month, we had our first six figure month. We turned over $124,000 last month. Holy cow. And just so you all know, what I teach is you go out and you do live webinars first. You work out all the kinks, you get out all the nerves, you understand what your audience wants, and you do a series of live webinars. Once you find that you have your success, like you've locked it in, then you move it over to automation. Kim did exactly what I teach. And now she just had her first six figure month and that's just going to continue. It only gets better. So Kim, you've got to tell me, why do you think you were so successful? Well, first of all, I I said, I think that the crux of everything was that I set an intention. I yes. set an intention, first of all, and I said, I'm, I, this is what I'm going to do. And it was, Amy, it was It was such a silly intention. It wasn't like, I'm going to create world peace. I'm going to provide my children with a better world. It was, I'm going to be Amy's most successful student. Yeah. And she's going to invite me on her podcast. You know, (laughs) but it was tangible. You know, it was tangible for me and it was measurable. And, you know, it wasn't something pie in the sky. It was very, very, very tangible. So I set an intention. Um, I, I created a good product 
that I knew people wanted because I had been searching for it. And then I, I, you know, I don't do things half-heartedly. Like I, I don't, I wasn't afraid to take a risk. You know, I, I, I took a risk. I took a calculated risk once I knew that I had, you know, it, I had created a good program and I, and I also invested. I invest, I wasn't afraid of investing money. And so I'd always known that in order to grow, you need to invest. Can I tell you a really, really, really quick story? Please. Uh, yes. About Kawasaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I remember listening to an interview with him years ago, and he said that a, a girl came up to him once, and it stuck in my mind. A girl came up to him and she said, I've written this really, really good book. It's an amazing book. And, you know, but the problem is I can't, you know, I can't get anyone, no one's purchased it. And I don't know how to, you know, what to do or whatever. So I just was wondering if you could give me any advice. And he said, you know, well, what I would do is I would go down to the local college and I would enroll in a sales course and I would, you know, sales and marketing course and I would blah, blah, blah. And she said, no, no, but you don't understand. I'm, I'm a writer. And he said, yeah, he said, but do you see the front of my book? Do you see what it says? And she said, what? And he says, it doesn't say Robert Kawasaki best writing author. It says Robert Kawasaki best selling author. He said, if you want to learn to sell your, he said, if you want to get your products out there, you have to learn to sell them. It's not enough to just create them. And that always stuck with me. And I thought I need to learn to sell what I've got. And so I think that was probably the biggest thing for me. And then I also recognized where I was limited because, you know, I can't do everything. I'm a mom of four homeschooling kids. I you know, was running a yoga business at the time. I thought, you know, as soon as I started making money, as soon as I started making money, I, I invested it in areas that I knew would free up my time. So areas where I wasn't strong, areas where I wasn't good, areas that were my weaknesses. I've always invested to grow. And Amy, I've always planned to grow. I, I actually hired Gravy. <laughs> <gasps> Great. We love Gravy. Yeah, they're amazing. And Casey, when he we had our first call, he said to me, I have never had anyone hire me proactively. And I said, really? He said, you're the first person who's hired me proactively. And I said, oh, well, there you are. I said, well, I intend to grow. And he said, I can tell you intend to grow. So I, I had that intention that I was going to grow. And I, I began to look at systems to prepare to grow. And I just I just kept investing and investing and it just kept growing. That and I think is it's so fantastic. It's okay. For those of you who don't know, Gravy, Gravy is the company that we both use to collect failed payments. So their recovery payment team, but there's so much more. I've talked to about them on the podcast a lot, but I'm they're, so excited that you're working with them. Yeah, so good. Yeah, so good. I'm because I was chasing so many like failed payments. It took up so much of my time. Yeah. So it's really good. Okay. So I love that you broke it down for us and talked about why you feel that you have had so much success in your business. Now, one other area that I know you've had great success in is in your team and hiring the right people. So what I'd love for you to talk about is your team now. And I think you started very lean and now you have a pretty decent sized team. Is that right? Yeah, that's true. It's funny. Whenever I um, started the, whenever I first launched the Sculpted Vegan, or I started, you know, putting myself out there as a vegan bodybuilder, I had a, a girl, a, a VA, write to me, and she said, you know, I've I've seen, I no, actually, do you know what? I I think I put an ad on People Per Hour or Upwork or something, one of those online platforms. I put an ad on there for a VA, and she wrote to me and she said, I see that you're a vegan. I am also vegan. I am also really into the gym. I'm a very very good VA, and you know, if you ever need anyone, you know, let me know. And I was like, oh, I can't really afford to hire anyone, but it would be so nice to have someone answer all my emails because I was getting loads of inquiries. So I hired her for I think like an hour a week or something. I think my bill at the time was maybe like a hundred dollars a month or something. <laughs> It was tiny. So I hired her and she's now my full-time project manager on a full-time wage. She doesn't work for anyone else. I love so, it. Yeah, she was as amazing as she said she was. And I think that when you find someone good, you have to hold on to them with both hands and you have to, you know, I've always, I've always said when you find good people, give them the freedom to do the job. Don't micromanage them. Find good people and let them get on with it. So Flora was my first ever, um, she was my first VA. She's now my project manager. Alan uh, it's funny, as my develop and developer and designer, um, he I found him on Upwork when I hired him to do, or no, People Per Hour, when I hired him to make a website for my dad. And I knew instantly from working with so many bad web designers in the past, uh, I knew instantly that he was amazing and he was so proactive. So I literally grabbed him with two hands and now he works with us. Now he doesn't work with me full time. He's 
on retainer, but I am his biggest client and he works with us. You know, he's like, he's part, he's part of the team. He's, you know, gotcha, he's, gotcha. Uh, I, I have him on speed dial. So I said to him the other day, I think I talked to you more than I talked to my husband. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so there's Flora and Alan. I recently hired a community manager to manage all my Facebook groups. Um, Stace, I hired her from inside the, uh, the, she's one of my students and she was one of the best students I've ever had. So I said to her, I was like, do you want to be a community manager? So, um, because Amy, I listened to your episode about how to build a team yes. and I followed your directions. <laughs> So good. Community manager. And then I listened to your episode about with Chloe, your project manager yes. or your creator. So I then that's when Flora got promoted to integrator or project manager. I told you I'm a really good student. Um, and then I, yes, yeah, so, I, so I now have a customer services manager. So how many do we have? We have Alan, Flora, Julie is customer services manager. Stace is a community manager. Jamie is email marketing manager. She looks after all of our Infusionsoft because that Infusionsoft scares me. Uh, and then I've just recently hired, I have Tarzan who does, you know, copywriting, but mostly email sequences. But now I've just hired a new copywriter to come and work on the team called Allison, who's going to work with us. Um, a, a lot of hours every month to come and do a lot of my writing for me because it's the one, it's the last area. Uh, I always say to my team, they are amazing, but they cannot string a sentence together. <laughs> so I have to do all the writing. And so now that's going to take a huge amount off my plate, having Alison on the team. So I think we're up to like, and then I have a couple of other people who work for me in the groups helping to moderate and stuff. I think we're up to like six or seven now. In only a year, Amy, it's gone so fast. So great. And you're just hiring really smart. So it's, it ah, ah. will take I so much one, pressure off. I did make one hire that was a mistake. And I listened to your episode about hiring a team. And you'd said that you, you know, you made oh. an example, you had someone and it wasn't, yes. it, it wasn't a hell yes. And at the time I just hired this person. I was thinking, I know I've made a mistake because it's not a hell yes. And so I had to let that person go. We've uh, all done it. Yeah, yeah, that's a normal thing. And and I think the best part of the learning process in that is getting the courage to say, I've made a mistake and I need to let this person go. That's so yeah. hard for be, with of being course. an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, this has been so fantastic. I could not be more excited for you. I'm so honored to be a part of your journey, although you've done all the hard work. You've made it happen, of course. So first of all, thank you so much for being on the show. I think people are going to love your story and just take a lot of learning gems from it. So I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for having me. It has honestly been a dream of mine for the last year. So I can tick that off the bucket list. Oh my gosh. So fantastic. And also, where can people learn more about you? I have a website, thesculptedvegan.com, and they can learn more there. It has everything. It's We have so many free resources. I give away so much of my best information for free. So awesome. everything on there is for free. You actually can't even purchase anything through my website. Everything on there is for free. The only way you can purchase something is through a webinar. Okay. Sounds very similar to my business. I absolutely love that. So cool. And I have to say, you're really fun to follow on Instagram as well. Your pictures are out of this world. Amazing. And so Instagram's a really fun place to follow Kim. So check out her website, thesculptedvegan.com and definitely find her on Instagram. Kim, thanks again for being here. I cannot wait to talk to you again. I hope we get to meet in person someday as well. Thank you so much. I hope that too, Amy. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. So there you have it. I hope you loved hearing Kim's story as much as I have. She is just such a great student, a go-getter, a risk taker, and someone that just keeps her eye on the prize. And I really admire that. So if you want to create a course business model, if you want to sell courses in your business and you don't want to have to rely on one-on-one -on -one consulting or coaching or a service-based business, and you love this idea that you can sell a course over and over and over again in your business, then stick with me because that's exactly what I teach inside of Digital Course Academy, which I will be launching in January 2019. So I would love to share with you all about this brand new program and all you need to do is go to amyporterfield.com forward slash DCA, amyporterfield.com forward slash DCA. You could sign up to be the first to know when my brand new program goes live. And also I have a freebie waiting for you there all about building courses in your business and launching them with webinars. So go check that out. Okay, guys, I cannot wait to connect with you again. Same time, same place next week. Bye for now.